Time now for today's health headlines. Actually, some really interesting things to talk about, like how what you say can affect a young girl's weight and what diabetes can do to the brain. Big stuff. Dr. Evelyn Manaya is back on the couch to fill us in on those stories and so much more. So. Calling young girls fat can hurt in many ways. Yes, absolutely. You see, and it does matter what you say. As a matter of fact, in my practice, believe it or not, I abhor those words, fat and obesity. But in this particular study, if the girls, and especially if it was somebody close to them, the mother, father, teacher, brother, sister, it didn't, you know, in that respect, it was somebody close. If you started to call these children fat, at the age of 10, it affected their weight for nine years later. Even when wow. we controlled for e wow. economic things and weight, high weight and everything else like that, and also other factors, it still made them gain weight. And I think that they have comfort in eating, as, as we all do. Well, you know, sure. it depends on, on what we do and things like that. But it, it goes to show you what we say. And even if you're trying to get them started, like I have a lot of parents that also say, oh, God, you know, look at her. She She's so fat. I hate those words. Right. I really, but really. How do you strike a balance between communicating right. and also instilling healthy habits? Mm -hmm. Well, you know something. First of all, you're the mom, are you not? You're the dad, are you not? You're the one that buys it. She doesn't go out to the supermarket and buy yes, stuff. Yes. Okay, so that's number one, healthy habits. And also, if you use words like I use words like increased BMI, do you know that this can affect your period? Do you know that it can affect your jogging? Do you know things like that? You know what I mean? So that they are a little are bit more ways, educational. Yeah, a, a little bit right. more educational mm -hmm. and softer. Right. Softer. You know, you don't have to be so harsh all the time. Time. It does affect them psychologically. But before we move on, isn't it important for children to hear how we speak about ourselves? If a mom oh, says, wow. I'm, right now we were talking about a bathing right. suit. You know, I know that that eventually can affect, you know, my children. Right. I think that we have to be nicer to ourselves and teach them by example. Right. Well, you know, something beauty comes from within. We all come in different shapes and sizes, and this is what I tell everybody. Mm. You know, and we have a goal. The goal is not diet. I don't like that word either. I like things like healthy living, yes. you know, so that we can run and we can laugh and we can do and enjoy life to its fullest. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about diabetes. Uh, oh. It can actually degenerate the brain? Whoa. It can degenerate the brain. So we know about this, the side effects of diabetes in terms of hands, the limbs being cut, so the vascular effects of diabetes. But now we're looking at it actually degenerates and makes the brain cells actually die so that you have less gray matter, you know. And it's amazing. My dad has been a diabetic for a very, very long time. So these are people with over 15 years of diabetes that has not been well controlled and there is a lot less gray matter in him and for oh, wow. over yeah, I know and, and it is amazing so we have also an increased incidence among these people Alzheimer's as well so we think that the way that the insulin is processed in the brain leads to plaque formation yeah. which will lead to Alzheimer's they all I know so they I know so it yeah. goes to show you that diabetes control yes for the heart attack for the stroke for the numb, you know, the numbness, right. and also for the limbs is important. But now but even the brain. The brain. Wow. Yeah. Even for the brain. Well, let's see now another, I guess this is a win for medical marijuana because it could help the uh, folks with MS. Yes, but not not all folks with MS. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, in this study in particular, this was only in pill form, also an oral spray. Okay, so it wasn't in smoking marijuana. It didn't make a difference. So what happened was that these people, for the spasticity, and uh, sometimes they're very spastic, you know what those things are. They're kind of like very, um, it's taut muscles. And yes. for the relaxation of it, it was very, very good. Huh. But also for the pain and the burning sensation that they would also get. However, cognitive-wise, it would affect them. So in other words, people with MS already have memory problems, and right. they have things like that. So a lot of people stop using the medication because of those side effects oh. so you have to learn how to balance oh my gosh but you know I mean there have been so many arguments against For medical and against. exactly right. and so this is actually a good thing to hear yeah. that if it can assist right it, it can assist but I think that we don't know enough of the medical side effects mm -hmm. also so everything has to be a balance while giving good things you also have to take in what are the you know side effects yeah. and how is it sure. going to deter their healing well hey and later today when people say what's up doc they're not <laughs> being disrespectful it's Bugs Bunny day too yes. oh, it's Bugs Bunny I love so Bugs Bunny well, thank you Dr. Evelyn Maniah we always love when you're no, here thank, thank you, you very much